This is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 10 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Tuesday morning. When I first was in Florida, it was when I was a kid, and uh, we used to visit here for my grandmother and grandfather, and they would sometimes take us out to this ice cream place in Crystal River, right? Mm -hmm. And we would go at night, and the lights would be on, and there'd be a gazillion bugs all over the place. Nice. <laughs> and, w and when you're a kid, and you and you are that close to the ground, you know, I mean, you are looking at these bugs. And... and <laughs> And, and they, were, they were amazing. I mean, there were some that looked like they were armored vehicles with like a, like a little rhinoceros with a horn sticking out of the oh, front. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and, the, and then they had these other ones that they uh, that used to find around gas stations. Uh-huh. What they call mole crickets, I think. I think so, Oh, yeah. my gosh. So uh, if, you are, if you are liking bugs, you're going to like this next conversation. There is an amazing book. In fact, it's number one right now. I just looked it up on Amazon. It's number one. It is called Innumerable Insects. And on the phone to talk to us about the book is Dr. Michael S. Engel. He's a research affiliate at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, which is where the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade starts. Robert. Yeah. That's where it starts. I love that museum. <laughs> I love going there. He's a professor of ecology mm -hmm. and evolutionary biology and the senior curator of entomology at the University of Kansas in Lawrence, Kansas. So I don't know where he is. Kansas or New York. Uh, Dr. Engel, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So where are you? I'm actually in Lawrence, Kansas. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. you have a lot of bugs in Kansas? Oh, we do. We do. As a matter of fact, our collection has about 5 million of them, if you would like to come see. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Well, when it's love bug season here in Florida, <laughs> we have 5 million on our dashboard. I mean, on our, on our, on our <laughs> windshield. You, windshield. That's what I mean to say, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Are you familiar with the love bug, by the way? Uh, not entirely, but I, if I believe it's a roach, right? <laughs> no, no, it's like a uh, fly, but it, but they're they're hooked together. Oh, they, oh yes, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, the 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 yes, the mating flies. Right, they fly around and they have you know their butts stuck together. So <laughs> absolutely. So tell me, tell me, tell me about the insects in the book. Well, the insects in the book are basically all of them. So <laughs> the attempt with the book to summarize the complete history of the most diverse lineage of animals on Earth. And so more than half of all species on Earth that we know of are insects. And it was a general attempt to kind of summarize what we know about them up to this day and also wow. highlight the past achievements of entomologists of the past. You talk about insect agriculture. I found that fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Millions of years, at least 35 or 40 million years before we developed agriculture, insects had already gone and developed their own sustainable crop systems, and so it's really quite amazing really? Um, what they've done. But termites and ants have agriculture as well as animal husbandry, even among the ants. That Oh, wow. That, so what is animal husbandry? What is that? So that's like keeping cattle. So we keep cows and, and we tend them and we, we uh, milk them and we use them as a source of food. And uh, ants will do the same with aphids. They will tend them as little cattle and they will milk them for honeydew. What? And they will take care of them in the winter and they will herd them around. And so they have their own form of animal husbandry. Wow, I never, I never knew that. That's, it's like a whole world happening right next to us. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's amazing things that are happening even in people's backyards, and it's usually just the fact that insects are so diminutive that they kind of pass our notice. Uh, we've been having uh, stories about the bee population starting to uh, diminish, and you talk about other bees that we're not familiar with, like honeybees or bumblebees. There's another bee. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, honeybees account for only seven species throughout the world, and yet there are 20,000 species that are found everywhere in the world, and they range from nocturnal bees to fire bees to sweat bees to carpenter bees, and so there's a rich diversity of bees that are out there, all of which are preeminent pollinators of our, you know, 
both our natural forests and meadows, but also of our agricultural ecosystems. So like in California, they rely upon a group of bees called alkali bees to feed, um, to um, pollinate alfalfa crops, and leaf cutter bees also pollinate alfalfa. And so there are this, these other pollinators that are out there that we tend to ignore, and all of them are being jeopardized. Okay, and they're being jeopardized by us, right? Yeah, yeah, through a sort of a lethal concoction of overuse of pesticides, habitat fragmentation, and climate change is kind of giving them this triple whammy. So do, do we hurt ourselves by hurting them? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, in order to save ourselves, we need to save them first. Okay, so so what do we do? do are we able to um, use nature to better control nature, or or are we are we stuck with the chemicals that we that we like to use? No, we can certainly use nature. Um, for example, we use pesticides to get rid of actual agricultural pests, and yet there are other insects that we can rely upon. So, for example, there are various caterpillars that may want to go out and eat um, many of our crops, and there are various forms of wasps that have naturally evolved to attack and control the populations of such um, herbivorous species. And so we can develop sustainable agricultural ecosystems by relying upon nature's own defenses rather than coming up with sort of toxic substances that hurt both the insects as well as ourselves. Wow. Uh, your, your travel is quite extensive. You've been to 40 countries north of the Arctic Circle and down to the equator in the, in, in the tropical rainforests. Do any of those insects, when the, the airplanes come in and then leave, do they ever like hitch a ride and then come back to the U.S. and, and they haven't existed here before, but then uh, they acclimate yeah. themselves? Uh, I don't bring them back, but certainly <laughs> human travel, <laughs> travel um, you know, it's not my mission to go out and, and redistribute insects throughout the world, but certainly human travel, both being the shipping industry, um, via airplanes, via all the various modes of uh, transport that we use, we have transplanted insects into the habitats where they're not supposed to be, and they've created ecological problems. You know, for example, across the eastern United States, I'm sure you're familiar with the giant resin bee, which was accidentally introduced from Asia. It's a large black bee that looks like a large carpenter bee of some kind, and it is actually establishing itself and spreading throughout the entirety of the eastern United States and potentially displacing some of our own native pollinators. We, we went to uh, an event on Saturday uh, it, there's a bat conservancy uh, near the University of Florida and so we got to see these bats and one of the things that the the, the curator I guess the, uh -huh. the, the director said was that the little bats they're only like three inches long the small ones they can eat 600 mosquitoes a night 600 yeah. there must be a yeah. lot of mosquitoes out there <laughs> There are a lot, and bats are a great way of control, naturally controlling mosquito populations. And I think it's fascinating that you actually find fossils of the insects. That is cool, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of the, the kind of a little bit wacky entomologists, so I run around with the <laughs> butterfly net in one hand and geologist pick in the other hand oh, um, because I'm very fascinated by this success story. I miss my calling. I was really good with a butterfly net, Robert, <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> Dr. Engel, thank you so much. This is a fun topic. The book is beautifully done. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I want to recommend uh, to buy the book. How do, how do we get this? Uh, you can find it anywhere books are sold and certainly in all the usual places online. Okay, very good. And it's currently number one on Amazon. I don't know if you knew that or not. Number one right now. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael Engel. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. The FBI is investigating an attempted mail bombing at the liberal billionaire donor George Soros' house in Bedford, New York. An employee of the residence opened the package and inside there appeared to be an explosive device. The employee then decided...